Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. Who's excited tonight? Who's excited on tonight? We serve a great God who's going to do some more great things. Hallelujah. He deserves our highest praise. Amen. Amen. Who was here last night? <laughs> Amen. You know, some of us have been asking the Lord to show us miracles, signs and wonders. Were you here last night? Did you see it? Amen. Amen. I put my high high shoes on tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless Bishop Cottrell. These, these, are, these are people that love her. That are coming to love on us. And I count it all joy. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it at all for granted. That it's God in her that loves a God in us. Amen. Amen. How many people uh, I know they got their healing last night? You got to claim it. You got you, you to gotta know it. You, you talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How many of you got your healing last night? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, this is what this is about. It's about being healed and liberated and set free and, and delivered from some stuff and things. Amen? Because I'm tired of being sick and tired. Of being sick and tired. I want all that God has for me. I said me. I don't, I don't want yours unless you want to give it to me. But I want all that God has for me. And I do understand that my mind has to be right. My mind has to be right in order to receive it. I'm tired of the devil just waiting on me to hand me, uh, for me to hand him my stuff. I'm tired of him hanging out in company with me waiting for me to say okay well devil, here you can have this back the Lord gave it to me but I'm going to give it back to you I'm tired of that God wants us to be blessed God wants us to be mm. hallelujah Hallelujah. Out of the mouth of babes, but you don't know what else to say. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, I guess some of y'all probably trying to figure out what is she doing? Our guests are, are, are running a little late. Amen. So I'm just going to pray and then I'm going to let the praise and worship team sing a little bit more. They are on their way. Um, so we bless the Lord for them. We pray that they get here, you know, no hurt, harm, or danger, because the devil is mad as hell. He's mad. He's mad. And we don't care. We don't care. We serve you notice tonight. We don't care. I love the Lord. He's heard my cry. Jesus. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I am his daughter, 
and he loves me so. I am his daughter and he will provide for me. I am his daughter and he loves me so. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. He's real good. He's so good. <laughs> his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Amen. God, we bless you tonight. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Father God, for this Thursday night service, Lord God, of the Daughter Summit 2014. We thank you, Lord God, for the women here, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that they've come expecting to hear a word from you. Lord God, we thank you for the men, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that we as women, that when this thing is over, that we'll have a new attitude. We'll think differently. We'll see differently. We'll talk differently. We'll hear differently. Because it's all about you. We thank you, Lord God. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord God, for the speaker of the hour, Lord God. I pray right now, Father God, that as she brings a fresh rhema word to this house, Lord God, that it's a word that will bless us, a word that will keep us. Have your way in her, Lord God. Have your way in her, Lord God. Allow her to hear every word you say for your people. We bless you, God. And we honor you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that she's traveled from Florida, Lord God, just to be in little old Dayton at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. Preaching a word to your daughters. Have your way, Lord God. Any hearts of stone, I pray, Lord God, that you will soften as only you know how. We bless you. We thank you for the angel of this house. We thank you, Lord God, that he loves his daughter so much that he wants us to have abundant life. We bless you. We praise you. We give you glory only to you because you are the only wise God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. Bless the Lord, he's word. There's a lifting of a hand. There's a lifting of a heart. Oh, there's a lifting of the eye, of the eye beyond the to where our help comes from Help me say
Love you tonight, God. And we're so grateful that you love us tonight, God. In spite of ourselves, in spite of our attitudes, in spite of our thoughts, the things we do, things we leave undone, selfishness, jealousy, malice, envy, hatred, gossip. You still love us. Anybody here glad about that tonight? We all guilty of it. Come on. But we serve a God that's a forgiving God. Come on, come on. He'll forgive us. Look beyond our faults and he'll see our need. Come on. Anybody here with me tonight? Bless him tonight. Lord, we, love, we just want to be close to you.
just want I just want
those hands together for the Lord. Come on, keep praising and worshiping. Keep thanking and glorifying. Keep honoring and exalting. Come on, come on, come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We want to be close to him. Close, close, close. Anybody want a close relationship with the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't you be seated? We're so glad to be here again tonight. Amen. I want to ask you, first of all, a couple of questions. Thanks be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Give this praise team a hand. Amen. They have led us in some incredible worship and praise and thanks be unto God for them. Um, a couple of housekeeping items we need to do before we get started and we're just going to move right into our service tonight with our wonderful, wonderful speaker that we have lined up for, for us. Um, now, I gave you an assignment. I am a school teacher by trade and that's what I've done for 32 years. I was a school teacher and I've had some rough schools and some rough classes. I mean rough, rough. And I've been able to help some people in the class and in the school, but they had to follow directions. See, if they followed wisdom directions, they would be helped. Now we're speaking in the youth stream, isn't that right, Philip Wedge? Amen. He came in my classroom and slumped back like he wasn't going to do nothing. I said, okay, you about to do something. But anyway, I don't want to tell you that story. It's too long. We got to get going. But if you did what I asked you to do yesterday, you get an A. Amen? Now, yesterday I said, if you're here tonight, bring somebody back with you. All right, now I want all the people who, I don't want the people you brought with you, I want the people that brought somebody. I need you to stand on your feet. If you brought somebody with you, amen. Hallelujah, I need you to come up here. I need you to come up here. Come on, if you brought somebody, don't bring the people you brought, just bring yourself. I need every minister on this front row to come. Hallelujah. And I need you to stretch your hands forth and I want you to bless these people. Come on, just go, go and bless them. Just bless them. Put your hands on them and bless them. Just go up and down the aisle and bless them. Just bless them. Just bless them. You're blessed in obedience. We heard last night about what? Oh, obedience. Bless you. Bless you. Come on, this is not a joke. When the minister of God pronounces a blessing on our lives we are blessed we are blessed we are blessed amen amen y'all can sit down now go sit with the people you brought because I'm going to have them to stand up they better be sitting next to you you didn't bring me. I knew about it. <laughs> Brought myself. <laughs> Amen. Now, if you didn't come last, no. If you came last night, I need you to stand. Now, if you were blessed last night, I need you to bless the Lord. Amen. You were blessed last night. Say, I was blessed last night. I was blessed last night. I was blessed last night. Now stay there, stay there, because some of y'all, I don't want you to have to get up and sit down and all that. If this is your first time here, I need you to stand up, join the ones who were here last night, and say, I don't care if y'all were blessed last night, I'm getting mine tonight. Come on and get up and say, I'm getting mine. Some of, some of us, come on, some of y'all say, I'm getting mine, or I'm getting mines, or whatever y'all gonna say. Say, I'm getting mine tonight. I'm getting mine tonight. Some of us are going to play catch up. We weren't here last night, but we're getting ours tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, tonight is a special night. Be seated for a minute because I'm going to ask you to stand up again and make you feel like you might be in the Catholic Church or something. 
Praise the Lord. They're good people. Amen. Um, we are going to have a, 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 a just an experience tonight. We're not just going to have church. Matter of fact, we're not even going to have church. We are the church coming to have an experience. Amen. We're coming to have an experience. We're coming to be charged up. We're coming to be rewired, amen? We're coming to be repro- But some of us got to be deprogrammed that we can be reprogrammed. So some of us are coming for the deprogramming and the reprogramming. Amen? So we're coming for an experience with God. So here's what we're going to do tonight. We are going to receive the woman of God, amen? And we're going to get on with, with the business of God tonight. She's got some things she wants to do with you and for you and around us. And she's going to do a lot of stuff tonight. But I want to tell you about her first and inter introduce her to you. Uh, this young woman is just absolutely phenomenal. You're going to see that anyway. But she, uh, and she, not but she, and she uh, is originally from New York. Any New Yorkers in here? No New Yorkers? Okay. All right. Well, she's from New York and the Holy Ghost who has, who is all wise and has lots of intelligence, said, girl, get out that snow and go down there to West Palm Beach, Florida. I like that Holy Ghost, amen. And so he sent her down to West Palm Beach, Florida, where she is uh, ministering in that venue. There is an extension from her church that is operating down there. Her daddy is the bishop, amen and uh, Bishop Roberts, and we just love him so much. He's a Jabula Bishop with us. And so Stephanie, thank God for her. She is, uh, has come to be with us. I've, I've heard this young lady minister several times, and I said, you know what? She needs to come to the Daughters Summit because we need her there, amen. And so I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm getting out of God's way so he can do what he has to do to, for his people. Amen? So won't you rise to your feet before we welcome her. I see my good friend out here, Pastor Man. Amen. Raise your hand up from Detroit. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. If she's going to be here for the, daughter, the whole daughter summit, we're going to have her to speak a word of wisdom into your heart. Amen. All right, put your hands together for none other than my daughter, my baby, but she's a grown woman in God. Come on in here, put your hands together for minister. Come on, come on, come on, I want some more. Hey Amen, I don't even want you to be able to hear me say it. Come on, come on, come on. Minister Stephanie Roberts, say yes. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. The honor is all mine. It is all mine. I'm just going to ask real quick if I can have the podium um, down at the bottom. I like to be down with you guys. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to ask um, really quick um, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are a worshiper, intercessor. I'm going to ask if you can speak to your God for just the next few moments. Pray in your language to the Father and let us create a prophetic atmosphere so that we give the Holy Spirit the gateway and the access that he needs to do what he wants to do. I'm just here to be a passageway. It's all about him tonight. Amen. So I'm going to ask if you would just take a few moments just to worship the King with me. And let us come against any, any hindering spirits that may try to come against our minds. Any spirits that might try to hinder the plan and the will of God in this hour for this conference. Any strongholds that will try and hinder the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords from moving the way he wants to move. Tonight I'm going to ask only those who know how to contact their King. Only those who know how to access the very living God to I'm, I just need you to just worship him with me. He's so worthy. Oh, 
I'm not here to put on the show. I need the worshipers to worship with me. I speak to every spirit, every opposing spirit in this region. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare Jesus Christ the headship over this ministry. I declare the headship of Jesus Christ over this body. I declare the headship of Jesus Christ over this region. I declare the kingdom of God in this place. Oh, let this region be changed. That this house will be a house and they will know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We bless this house in the mighty name of Jesus. Every intercessor, every worshiper, every prayer warrior, every teacher, every apostle, every evangelist, every pastor, I need you. Bless this region, bless this house, bless the bishop of this house, bless the people of this body for they are doing a kingdom work in this place and we come against every every spirit that will try and hinder the plan and the very will of the holy spirit i curse you in the mighty name of jesus christ every spirit that has tried to linger every spirit that's tried to hide here every spirit we curse you we come against you in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus we call forth the laborers from the north the south the east and the west to come forth to the house of god come forth for the lord is calling you forth come forth we declare this house to be packed like never before we bless this place for this is the house of the very living God and we praise him in this house take Kara, will you worship the king of kings and the lord of lords I come against every strategy that has tried to hinder this place. I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ, for this is the house of the very living God, and we bless this place today. We bless the leaders in this place. We bless the bishop of this house. We bless the leaders in this region and we declare the headship of Jesus Christ in this place that will never be the same after this daughter's Ekarabasha. I just need the intercession. I need, I, need I, 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 I am not here for myself I, I need those who know how to reach God I'm not trying to put on this show but I promise you if you will align yourself with the spirit he won't be the same. Ho koramba shataya. He koraba sataya. Harabo shandarabo We're getting there. We're getting. Hey, Kasha. We're not moving into the atmosphere is conducive to what he wants to give birth to. Hey, Kasha. Hey, Kasha. Kata. Come on, y'all. Come on. The kingdom of darkness knows why we're here, and they're not just gonna let us establish the kingdom in this place they're going to come against your mind but we're going to speak against that right now we're the intercessors we declare Ronda 
Yeshayaro Shoya, Yekhekoria, Yeshere Asakashne, Hekora Shata, Yekorinda Seketa, Heshanda Shekota, Yetkna Hishketa, Hishkataya, Ekora Shakatange, Hesora Bashata. Sing the chorus with me. You are Alpha and Omega. Sing it with me. We We're going to hold the music because he wants to hear your worship. To be praised. Sing that with me one more time. You are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. Let the heavens hear your worship right now. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the glory. We worship you. Let them hear your praise. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. One more time, we give you all. We give you all the He's always worthy to be praised. Always worthy, always worthy to be. You are worthy to be praised. Tell him you are. You are worthy to. Tell him he's always worthy to be praised. Always worthy, yeah, yeah. always worthy. You be you are worthy one more time you are worthy father you are worthy to and one more time tell him he's always worthy always worthy Lord. always worthy to be praised you may be seated in the presence of the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's so worthy, so worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we need you. Let it not be I, but your spirit. Manifest yourself in this place today. We bless your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Got to get them demons out the way before we move on. <laughs> Amen. I want, of course, again, give honor to the Holy Spirit who is very much up in this place. How many feel his presence? Yes. Amen. Amen. Give honor to the visionaries and the vision of this house to the Bishop McGuire. Uh, thank the visionary of this house. Honor the leader. We honor you, Bishop. 
in the work that you're doing. There's such an excellence in this house. There's an excellent spirit here, and we honor. God honors excellence. Said that Daniel, I believe, had an excellent spirit, and we honor the visionary of this house. We want to, of course, give honor to the visionary of the Daughter Summit, Bishop Angela Cottrell. Right? Yes, give honor where honor is due for the vision that she has for the women of God. Amen. I want to give honor to my mentor <laughs> and my bishop, Bishop Roderick Roberts, and First Lady Doreen Roberts, and my leaders of my Rama family, West Palm Beach and New York. I honor my ministry and my leadership. I was told that honor gives you access, and I'm learning that it's true. <laughs> so give me a moment why I honor the anointed one so that I might tap into what they have. <laughs> Honor, honor the leaders of the house and the saints and every one of you who chose to be here tonight. I always say God is a mighty God, but he can only reveal himself through you and die. So give a round of applause for yourself for choosing to be here tonight. That's how you feel about you choosing to be in the house of the Lord. I would be applaud yourself, celebrate you. That's the thing that we don't do that often. Celebrate yourself. I came tonight because I felt something in my spirit that said I needed to be in the house of the Lord. Clap for yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. Celebrate you. Let's celebrate me and let's celebrate each other. Right? That's the thing that we're missing sometimes, to celebrate one another. Um, just really quick, I brought some products with me that I actually specially made for this event. Um, I have a handcrafting business, and I brought some of these gifts with me for you, um, and you can check them out afterwards. I have them here up front. I'm going to ask um, Sister uh, Minister Johnson to help me out a little bit because I didn't get to ask for some help with this. So if you ladies, I would truly be honored by your help. Um, I have these available. Anybody want one of these? Anybody want? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. I also brought uh, just one of my uh, teachings with me. It's called The Five Elements of Existence. Uh, I talk about your identity, your power, your dominion, your keys, and your tools. I specifically got these envelopes and placed flowers on them for you. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Don't mind me. So I sat down and I put flowers on them because I was like, I hope they purchased them and make it look enticing. So hopefully, <laughs> would anybody like one? Amen. God bless you. <laughs> I pray that that will enlarge you and increase you. Amen. Before I go into the word of the Lord, I, it's only fair that I give you a quick, my quick testimony. <laughs> I promise you, how much time do I have, Bishop? I promise you I will not take up too much of your time. <laughs> um, again, my name is Stephanie Roberts. I live in West Palm Beach, Florida. I just want to quickly give you some of my experiences and how I came to stand before you today. Um, I met my father. His name is Bishop Roderick Roberts, Ministry of Rhema Christian Center in New York. I met him eight years ago. <laughs> um, my father did not know I existed. My mother got pregnant and they were young, 14 and 15 years old. It was before my father was saved. I need to make sure I put that out there. And um, as soon as she conceived, he got saved and he began to invite her to church, but she didn't want to interfere with his life or with his family, so she decided not to tell him about me being born. And so for 22 years, I did not know who my father was, never asked about him, never was mentioned, didn't know his name. All I heard was he was from Jamaica. And I was like, I'm Jamaican. <laughs> but I never really knew <laughs> if that was true or not. I just went by some things that I heard. And as a matter of fact, any time that I tried to mention anything about father or dad, I just got this look from my mom that, you know those looks that your moms give you when they don't want you to come say anything to them? <laughs> or when you're out in public and you know the look from mom. So when it came to my dad, I got those looks and she, I just never asked her. 
And so one day I was home, I was 22 years old, and I will tell you eight years ago, there was nothing Christ-like about me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. <laughs> We're gonna touch that in a minute. And um, she called me and she says, guess who I ran into today? And I said, you know, I'm tired. I'm like, you know, I would have never imagined she said my father because she never mentioned him to me. And so she said, I bumped into your father. And um, I said, oh my God. And I knew in that moment when she said that to me that my life was about to change forever. I didn't know how. I just knew when the word father came out the mouth of my mother, <laughs> I knew that my life was going to do a 360. And so we spoke for the first time on the phone. My mom eventually told him, I have a 22-year-old daughter, and she's yours. <laughs> And so, gratefully, we didn't go on Maury to get that approved. But uh, we did take a DNA test. <laughs> Stop acting like you don't watch Maury sometimes. <laughs> Stop. Come on. We're going to be real tonight. You want to see the real Holy Spirit, you have to be real. <laughs> and so we took a DNA test. <laughs> and it was 99.99. .99. My dad says he doesn't know what happened to the other 1%. <laughs> but, um... I decided that um, I wanted to surrender my life to God. And eight years ago is when I became saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is me eight years later. It does not take a long time for God to change your life. If you're willing, he will transform you. I'm proof of that. Amen. But really quick, unfortunately, that not having my father left me exposed to some things that were traumatic to me. As a matter of fact, at the age of three, my sister's father began to molest me at the age of three years old. I would go to bed at night and I would wake up with his, in his bed, my mom worked nights, and he would whisper in my ear and ask me if I liked the things that he was doing to me. And you're three and four years old, you don't really know how to respond to things like that, so I would say yes. The molestation was bad, and I used to wet the bed a lot, so I got beaten for wetting the bed from him molesting me. And um, it, the molestation also caused me to, um, as I said, wet the bed, so much so that they didn't change my mattress. They had me sleep in my urine every night. <laughs> and when family would come over, they would come over to my area, because I had a mattress on the floor, and they would say, don't go near Stephanie's room, that's the pee girl, don't go in there. And when my mother was at home, that same stepfather would take two chairs and he would tie me together on the chair and he would lay me on my stomach and give me a spanking. <laughs> Many times I had no idea what for. <laughs> um, eventually my mother caught him in the act of molesting me and she decided to leave him but move um, out and she's let me live with my grandmother. And the molestation continued with another re relative. Now five, six years old, I'm living with an uncle about 13 and he begins to molest me as well. I had other family members and he would force me to perform sexual acts on them at the age of five, six. If I didn't, he would choke me. My uncle would take off all his clothes and sit on my face and suffocate me. <laughs> and he would get up and tell me what I smelled like. He would spit in my food. He would put snot in my sandwiches. He would have my other relatives put mucus in my food and after I ate, he would tell me what they did to it and they would all laugh at me. I finally had to move out from their house and I went back to live with my mom who I love dearly. Please, I want you to know that I love her and honor my mother. And when I went to move in with her, this was the first time that I was in the same household with a male that didn't abuse me, but I watched him beat my mom. I would come home and clothes would be torn. She would have black eyes. Uh, I would watch him sitting on her stomach, beating her face. <laughs> and he was an alcoholic. And I watched him beat my mother. <laughs> By the time I turned 13, I had my first abortion. Um, came promiscuous and uh, I dropped out of school at 15 years old and uh, I decided to start living my life on the street <laughs> and
and I got involved in gang banging. <laughs> I had to fight a bunch of men to be a part of the gang. I started doing drugs, started um, getting involved with mobsters. Um, I began doing marijuana, ecstasy, and cocaine, and um, living my life on the street. By the time I turned 17, I decided that it was crazy because in all of this, I kept hearing a voice say, this is not who you are. <laughs> this is not who you are. <laughs> There's more to you. There's more to you. I could never pinpoint it. I, I'm, I'm sniffing cocaine, okay? And I'm hearing this voice, this is not who you are. This is not you. And so I, I, it drove me so crazy that I decided to go back to school and just drop the life. I said, this, I, this, this keeps telling me that this is not who I am. So I, I'm, no, no one called me to church. No one. I just had to follow that voice. Of course, I know it's the Holy Spirit. And I followed him. I went back to school, went back home to my mother, and began trying to put the pieces of my life together. And by the age of 22, I'm working. I went back to college, got my degree in criminal law, but I still don't know that voice. Never got to pinpoint it. And so the moment my mother said, your father. <laughs> I met your father. <laughs> I knew it had some type of connection to that voice I would hear go, this is not who you are. This is not who you are. <laughs> so I ran to church, but the problem was I ended up trying to hide behind it. So I got saved thinking that this would wash away all of the abuse that I experienced. So I'm saved and I said, oh, well now the pastor will be my He's the one that connects to God for me. So I'm okay. But I'm carrying the weight of my past. And now I am a PK kid, whatever that means. <laughs> Where's Phyllis? I know she understands what I'm saying. Where's she at? <laughs> now you're a PK kid. Okay? You don't go from sniffing coke to being a PK kid. Can I be real with you in this place today? Now I'm a PK, kill the pastor's daughter, she's so pretty. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's like, yo, <laughs> I don't know about this church thing, man. <laughs> Seriously, I still don't sometimes, but they gotta have the Holy Spirit because people are crazy. <laughs> now I have this pressure to be something that I'm not. Now you're the oldest sister, you're a PK kid. Again, whatever that means. <laughs> and now I have this pressure. So much pressure that only nine months later I became pregnant with my daughter and had a child out of wedlock. Now it's no, oh, she's so cute. It's now the daughter's she's pregnant. You heard about the pastor's daughter. <laughs> Can I be real up in here? Y'all don't get so churchy on me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to show you the Holy Spirit. I'm going somewhere, trust me. <laughs> now, the place that I was trying to hide behind was, she's pregnant. Oh, did you hear about it? People didn't know my experiences. We have to be careful when people come into the house of God and they don't look like. Got to be careful how we treat people who walk through those doors. Everybody's not going to look like. Because it's not what's on the outside. For man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And I became pregnant. And I left church. I said, if these, this, this is what church is about, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I left. I had my daughter finally decided to come back. Trust me, I'm going somewhere, I promise you. I decided to come back, get my life together, and the pressure of being a mother, having new family, the past experiences drove me mad, and I decided to try to commit suicide. So I take an overdose of over 100 pills. Can I be real with y'all tonight? <laughs> I'm gonna show you the Holy Spirit, I promise you. 
or he's going to show himself. <laughs> I just have to get me out the way. I'm exposing myself in hopes that you will connect to an experience of your own so that the Holy Spirit may move through you tonight. There's a purpose behind this. I'm exposing my soul so that you can connect to the spirit of the living God. Okay. Take an overdose of pills and I did not expect to wake up. So I was angry when I woke up. I was angry. Cause you don't have a plan B when you're trying to die. <laughs> I'm not going to say, if I don't die, I'm going to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you try to take your life, you don't say, if that doesn't work, I'm going to try this. You're trying to end the thing. It's a wrap, a Reynolds. Do they say that anymore? Say Reynolds? Am I old? Am I saying, okay. All right, back to the show. So, <laughs> they put me in a psych ward, guys. Oh, my God, I was in a psych ward. I'm talking, Stephanie, open your mouth, at everything you see in the movies times 10. It was crazy. But I, our people were like, Stephanie. I'm not trying to make fun of them, but it was scary. You want to eat with me today? I was like, Jesus, where are you? <laughs> this is not voice. Where's that voice? Where's that voice? Where's that voice that told me this is not me? Where are you? Now I'm hooked on antidepressants. Now I'm at the rock bottom of my life which is funny because that's exactly where I needed to be. <laughs> that God would be so good that everything that happened would position me to be right here tonight. <laughs> that he knew the steps that would be taken so that by the time 2014, Daughter Summit would come Saturday nights on May the 15th. The Holy Spirit knew that this is where you are right now, but by the time the Daughter Summit comes around, you're gonna be standing and declaring my mind. Jesus, God is good. Can I get a praise for the Holy Spirit? Not for me, but the Holy Spirit. He's good. Now we will enter into phase two. <laughs> Jesus is good. You were singing that song, real, real. Jesus is real to me. <laughs> oh, just real quick, come on. <laughs> yes. How many believe that? Let me hear that. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why. Oh, he's so real to me. Jesus. <laughs> that was for you, Bishop. The topic I'm going to share with you, I had to lay that foundation, is called I Am Anointed. Let me hear you say, I Am Anointed. I had to lay that foundation for you first. I had to expose myself so that now the Holy Spirit can do his thing. Let me hear you say that one more time. I am, I am anointed. anointed. I'm going to give five foundational questions to this subject matter. And first I'm going to ask what is, I didn't get a chance to get the scriptures, but I'm going to be reading from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Let me hear you say that one more time. I am anointed. Now I want you to say it like you actually believe that. I am. One more time, like you're feeling it a little bit. I am anointed. How many believe that you have been anointed? Now the focus tonight, I'm not going to focus on the anointing. Because before the foundations of the earth, the Father placed this anointing inside of you. As a matter of fact, he said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and I ordained you a prophet. Which means that the anointing that he would need to operate in his prophetic unctioning was already within him. So I'm not going to focus on the anointing because it's already within you. 
nor am I going to focus on the I am because the I am is the I am. <laughs> he is God, Alpha and Omega, always the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, the beginning and the end, the everlasting to everlasting, mighty God, King, Lord, Savior, Redeemer, Deliverer, Healer, <laughs> Provider, <laughs> Comforter, Counselor. I don't need to really reestablish his mightiness. He does it all by himself. <laughs> what I'm going to focus on is what lies between the I am and the anointed. When you write those words down on the paper, I'm going to focus on the space between the I am and the And my assignment, or shall I say kingdom assignment tonight, is to bridge the gap between the I am and the anointing that is rusting on the inside of you. Amen? What is the anointing? There are a few definitions for it, but one of the definitions for it is being chosen one. Say, I have been chosen. I have been chosen. The scripture Luke 4 and 18, King James says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. This is the reason why before the foundations of the earth, the Father has placed an anointing on your life. You have been chosen for such a time as this. It says we are a, role, a chosen Jenner, I'm sorry, a chosen priesthood, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Thank you. Why has God anointed me? Let's get all these questions out of the way so we can move into the meat of this. Why has he chosen me? I'm going to tell you. Inside of you, every single one of you, there is something unique in you. As a matter of fact, just as I didn't know my father, there is a DNA that you have naturally that no one else has. In the natural can you agree with me to that? There is no one in the world that has your exact DNA. As a matter of fact, so much so that if you could commit a crime and your DNA is there, we can pinpoint you right away because no one else, you can't explain why your DNA was here. <laughs> That's how unique you are that out of the billions of people who live in the world, I can pinpoint you because of your DNA that nobody has. It is the same thing that is in the spirit realm. First that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. Just as there is only one person with your DNA, so it is in the spirit realm. There is only you with the DNA of God that you have. I'm going to say that one more time. There is only you with the dimension of God that you have in you. There is absolutely no one else in the entire world that has the same manifestation, anointing, uh, uh, manif all the dimension of God that you have, only you have it. See it as you see the natural DNA. If you believe that, then hopefully you will believe what I'm saying. And so we're in a time and season where God wants to manifest his glory. The time has come for me to show myself. And I need you, says the Lord. Because there is a dimension of myself that is in you that no one else has. So I am knocking at you. And he, the I am, is trying to connect to the anointing which he's placed in you before the foundations of the earth. And why is he trying to connect? Because he gave me such authority that I have to say, come and connect to the anointing that you gave me before the foundations of the earth through my mindset, which is where I'm going to focus tonight. Let me hear you say, I am anointed. What else is the anointing designed to do? The anointing is designed not just to preach and teach. It's designed... Are you with me this evening? The anointing is designed to overflow into every area in my life. He didn't just anoint me before the foundations of the earth just to speak in tongues. <laughs> That's good, but when I'm done, I have to get up and do something because faith without is dead. And that's what happens to the anointing inside of you. So he's giving me this anointing. And he's in the anointing that was in me is designed to overflow into my relationships, overflow into my finances, overflow into my every dimension of my life. The anointing is designed to, it says that 
uh, my gift make, makes room for me. <laughs> my gift, my anointing is designed to open doors for me. When you are walking with the Holy Spirit and you're allowing the I am to connect to the anointing that is already on the inside of you before the foundations of the earth and you're walking and you're in sync with him and the anointing that is in you, things move out your way. <laughs> you don't have to say anything or try to be anything else because your anointing is spiritual speaking for you. I don't, you don't have to try and do anything major. When you see people working too hard, it's because they have not allowed the I am to connect to the anointing, which is already on the inside of you before the foundations of the world. Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and ordained you a prophet. Jesus. Sorry. Let me hear you say, I am. Yes, you are. We are anointed. What must I do to activate my anointing? Don't focus on the anointing. <laughs> to activate my anointing, I don't focus on my anointing. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to make sense of it. Can we just take two seconds and just bless the Holy Spirit for his presence? What must I do to activate my anointing? Don't focus on the anointing. Focus on my mindset. Let me hear you say my mind. Focus on my mindset. It is what stands between the I am and the anointed. Let's move into phase two. <laughs> I'm going to give you tonight seven keys that will unleash the anointing that God has placed in you before the foundations of the earth. I'm going to ask if it's possible you don't have to write. I have this typed out, and if you get me a piece of paper, write your email on it, I will email you the outline. Okay, I want you to have it. <clears throat> of course, I want you to bless the house and if they have the CD or DVD available, so back into the house. But I also want to email it to you. So I'm gonna ask, because I want to be engaged with you and sometimes we can miss some things when we're writing. So if you give me your email, you can type it on, write it a piece of paper and give it to me and I will send it to you so we can be one with this thing, amen? We're gonna do this together. It's a team, amen? <laughs> Seven keys in unleashing your anointing. For that, we're going to turn to 2 Kings. I'm almost done here. 2 Kings chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to ask if we can read that together, um, if possible. Give me another 15 minutes, and I'll be out of your way. I'll be out your way. When you have it, let's read it together. Again, that's 2 Kings chapter 4. Verses 1 through 5. Seven keys in unlocking the anointing and giving the I am access to the anointing that you already have. Do me a favor and read that aloud for me, please. My sons to be verse 2 and Elijah said unto her In verse 5, I'm excited. <clears throat> and she poured out. Let me hear you say, I am. One more time, I am. 
Can you pull up verse one for me, please? Seven keys in unlocking the anointing and giving the I am access to the anointing that is already inside of me before the foundations of the world. Key number one, I need to identify my crutches. I need to identify my hiding places. Verse 1 says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. A certain woman. We already see in the verse opening up, she's in an emotional state. Of course she is. Her husband just passed away, and we understand that. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead. So in order for me, the first key in unlocking the anointing that is on the inside of me, I have to confront the things that are hindering the anointing from flowing. I have to confront the things that I'm hiding behind. Because we can say, oh, I'm anointed, I want God to use me, but we're scared and we hide behind certain things. So what is the person or the thing that you might be hiding behind that's hindering the I am from connecting to the anointing that is inside of you and was before the foundations of the earth? Number one, I have to confront my hiding places. So we see that she was emotional. The second thing that we see is she said that thy servant, my husband, is dead. There was an emotional dependence that she had on him. He was here for me. He was there, you know, when I woke up, he, we were together, and now he's gone, and I'm I'm weeping and I'm hurting. She was in an emotional state. Getting emotional is okay and crying is necessary, but don't hide behind that emotion. Don't live your life in an emotional state because the anointing will never flow through you if you're hiding behind tears. Amen? Then she said, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. So I'm dependent on my husband, and he was your servant. So I'm dependent on my husband's relationships. There was a relational dependence that she had. I'm dependent on other people. You know that he worked with you. He prophesied with you. He carried the anointing, and I, he's gone. What am I supposed to do? So there was a relational dependence. She's hiding behind people, hiding behind friends, hiding behind relationships that you know are connected to your destiny. And thou knowest that thy, that thy servant did fear the Lord. He was the prayer warrior. There was a spiritual dependence that she had. I'm dependent on his prayer life. He feared him. He worshiped. And I was dependent on his praise. And now he's gone. Who's going to cover me? Amen. <laughs> Who's going to do it now? Elijah? Leaders are in our lives just to do that lead. We cannot be dependent on leaders. Leaders are to lead us, but they cannot make us walk in our anointing. You have to choose. Let's not, oh, he didn't, did you hear how he taught today? No. What are you going to teach? When are you going to stop hiding behind gossip and stand up and declare the word of the Lord that was in you before the foundations of the world? Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and ordained you. Stop crying. Stop being dependent on the pastor and the leader. Stop being dependent on those relationships. Those boyfriend and girlfriends, they got nothing going on with them, says the Lord. Please, please. <laughs> I'm almost done. We're only at step seven. I got to get through seven. Now, the Holy Spirit, you didn't do seven. <laughs> I got to do what my Lord tells me. <laughs> Here we go. Last one. Emotional dependence, relational dependence, spiritual dependence, all in verse one. That servant did fear the Lord and the creditors. Now we see a financial dependence <laughs> that she had. And they're going to come take my sons. They make the money in the house. It might not be sons. It might be something else. There was a financial dependence. I'm depending on them to bring in the money. And the bonds, the, the creditors are about to come take them. <laughs> Tell me what to do, Elijah. So we have a financial 
dependence? What are you hiding behind? What are you dependent on that's hindering, hindering you from recognizing the anointing that was already inside of you before the foundations of the world? What are you crying out about? And do you know that you're crying? Holy Spirit, please help me. I might have to have a car ready. I don't want you guys like here. It's not <laughs> and lastly, what I actually saw when I read this again, there was a dependence on her mindset. She depended on her way of thinking. So much so she didn't even realize she was thinking that way. <laughs> So not only are these the things I'm hiding behind and I'm depending on, but I'm depending on thinking about the things that I need to depend on. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. Not only am I hiding behind these things and I'm dependent on them, but I'm dependent on the mind that's causing me to hide behind these things. <laughs> Can we just give the Holy Spirit just a quick praise? Just real I'm almost done, I promise. I'm almost done, Bishop. I'm almost done. <laughs> my first key in unlocking my anointing, what are you hiding behind? You only know that. You're the only one that know that. No, key number two, again, you don't have to write this. I'm going to email it to you. The second thing, oh, this is my favorite one. The second thing that I need to do to recognize the anointing that is already inside of me before the foundation of the world, the Holy Spirit told me to keep doing that while I was teaching. That's why I keep saying it. Is I need to recognize the value that is in you. You are valuable, right? Everything that is in this world is designed to tell you the opposite. And if you shift your mind to the fact and the truth of the matter that this nature is sin, we have the nature of sin, so it's obviously going to oppose who you truly are. Not tr not, I mean, it's not who we truly are, but it is who we naturally are. We're sinners. So automatically, I'm born with a mindset that tells me I am not the anointed one. I need to recognize that I'm valuable. Say, say, I'm valuable. I'm valuable. You know what? Being molested, abused, on drugs, living on the streets, people spitting in your food, that will tell you that you're not valuable. Being beaten, being abused, going through the things that I know a lot of you have gone through, I feel it. Everything will tell you, you you're, and the enemy will just solidify, you can't do it. Didn't you, don't you remember what happened last time when you tried? You're going to try that? You really think you're pretty? Don't, <laughs> they don't like you. Don't you know that? They don't remember what happened when you tried that before. You can't do it. You won't do it. You're not that strong. You're not that smart. You're not that tough. You're not that strong. Oh, you're weak. Stop playing like you really believe that. Am I talking to people? or church people, which one? <laughs> am I talking to the anointed chosen or am I talking to church people? Because I'm not here for church. I'm here to establish the kingdom of God and tell you that there is an anointing that is rising up in your spirit even right now. I need to recognize that I am valuable. Please, you please put up verse two. Let me show you something, I love this. Put up verse two for me, please. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Read verse 2 for me, family. Read verse 2 for me really quick. Watch. I love this. I love this. This is my favorite part. I don't have anything. We know that the oil represents the anointing, the anointing representing the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. We know that the house is the temple of the living God, that he dwells in this vessel, in this house. The term there, save, a pot of oil, the word ter the save there means accept. So let me translate what she was actually saying. I love this. First of all, notice how she came crying to Elijah. 
And he pointed right back to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that your husband is dead, but what is in your house? I heard you say that you're dependent on your pet, but what is in your spirit? I heard you say that the creditors are coming, but what do you have inside of you? I know that there is, this is not here anymore, and that person is gone, and I don't have the money like I used to have, but what's inside of you? I know that I, I, you, don't, you don't have those things that you used to have, but what's inside of you? I love that, Elijah. That's what leaders do. They lead you back to yourself. Can we give God a praise just right there? Just because he's just, he's just God. He's just, you're so awesome. I love you. I give him the glory, him the glory, him the glory. Jesus. Don't sound like somebody who was sniffing cocaine. He washes you up. You would never know that just eight years ago I was sniffing coke and today I'm standing here to declare the mind of God. What are you hiding behind? There is an anointing inside of you and I'm only here on assignment for the kingdom to tell you as an ambassador that there is greatness on the inside of you. Recognize your value. Jesus, please be seated. I'm sorry. Got a little ahead of myself there. I don't have anything. What do you have inside? What do you have? What do you have in you? I don't have anything except a pot of oil. <laughs> Here's what she really said. Or you're representing the anointing, yes? <laughs> Here we go. What do you have? I don't have anything except the anointing. <laughs> I don't have anything except the Holy Spirit. I, do, I don't have anything except the deliverer. I, 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 I don't have anything except the living God. I, I, don't, I don't have anything except the wonderful counselor. I don't, I don't have anything except the Prince of Peace. I don't have anything except the spirit that divided the firmament from above and the waters from above from the waters beneath. I don't have anything except the spirit that caused a blind man to see. I don't have anything except that made the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't have anything except the spirit that declared the heavens and, the, and declared all that is in the earth and created. I don't have this, this anything inside of me except the spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the living dead. I don't have anything inside of me. I'm telling you, you have an anointing that is rising up in you. Somebody give God a praise up in this place. You are anointed. I said you are anointed. I said that he's called you, Elijah, for such a time as this. Stop hiding, stop whining, and walk in your destiny. I don't have anything. Recognize your value. I might have been molested, but my God, I'm valuable. I might have been beaten, but my God, I'm valuable. They might have tried to break me, but it only made me broken for the Holy Spirit. of My God, I'm valuable. I might not have that much, but I have the anointing, and that's all I need. Somebody bless the name of the living God. Let me hear you say, I am valuable. How many believe that tonight you are valuable? I don't care what you've been through. You have God living on the inside of you. Recognize your value. I feel a praise right there. I feel a, I feel a break. I feel something breaking on the inside of you. I feel an anointing rising in this place. I feel something powerful happening inside of your spirit. I am anointed. I am valuable. I am a child of the living God.
and nobody can tell me different. God, you're worthy, Jesus. Father, we praise your name, God. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Oh, there's none like you, Jesus. Oh, you're great and greatly to be praised. We exalt your name in this house tonight. Let me finish. Let me, let me, let me at least try to get through two more. <laughs> Something breaking in your life. You get your, you get your breakthrough, Hekata. He shakata ya. You get your breakthrough. Heba baya. Hataba. There should be something shaking in the inside of your spirit. Don't stop it. Don't be afraid of it. It is only the anointing trying to rise out of you. It is only the power of the living God. It is only the prince of peace. It is only the deliverer, the wonderful God. It is only the don't be feared, daughter. Don't fear the power. Don't fear the uniting. Don't fear my presence. I am living on the inside of you. Somebody praise him. I come against that spirit of fear. Some of you looking at me like I got head, four heads on my shoulder. It's only the anointing. <laughs> Hey, Kata. Oh, we're breaking them strongholds today. We're breaking that mindset. Hey, Kata, ya. Be seated, be seated. Be seated. I'm, I'm almost What's step number one? Help me out here. What was step number one? Anybody remember the first key? Key number two. Dang, we only got to two, right? Shoot. I have to go in the order of the scripture. Ooh, I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Made my daughter do that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to just scratch that. Verse 3. Verse 3. I have to identify my hiding places. I have to recognize that I'm valuable. Verse 3. Read that for me, please. I'm almost done. It's two more verses. <laughs> Key number 3. I need to sub... I have to... Submit to authority and instruction. Nobody likes that one. <laughs> if there is an anointing inside of you and you believe that, then you believe that God has placed a leader or leaders in your life that you must submit to and, and submit to their instruction and obedience. The thing is, a lot of times... So many people in our lives have taken advantage of their authority that when God sends real people, real men and women of God, the enemy has so much corrupted your mind that you have trouble submitting to leadership. This is the one that, that's why I did the value thing first so that, yeah, this afterwards, thank you, Lord. <laughs> this is the piece that we don't like. Be, it's hard to submit I could come to church for 10 years and never submit to the vision of the house. And can I tell you something? There is no perfect leader or leaders. There is no perfect pastor. There is no point. Everybody was born into sin. Everybody has issues, okay? We all have them. It's a matter of how you deal with them and how you operate in order. We have to submit to the, if you know in your heart that God has called you to this house or the house that wherever you are, make sure your heart is submitted to the vision and the authority that God has set before you. Because guess what? Guess what? Let me tell you something. Do you think that God, <laughs> if God himself could call a leader 
a pastor, a bishop, whoever that leader is in your life, and think that you don't, you don't think, we don't think that God knows their shortcomings. If God called them, then who am I to judge leadership? How about I submit to it and see what I can bring to the table? It's easy to say he's not doing this or they're not doing that or did you hear the praise and da 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 da. How about you submit your anointing to it? Because most likely, if you're recognized, that might just be what you're anointed to do. What are you hiding behind? Gossip? What are you hiding behind? Submit to the authority and the leadership that God has placed in your life. They're there for a reason. You don't have to agree with everything that they do. But if God calls them, who am I to judge them, huh? If he knew before the foundations of the earth that that pastor or the, whoever that leader is is not going to be perfect. If he knew that already and he still made them my leader, then who am I to say anything? Submit to the authority that is in your life. You're not submitting to them. You're submitting to the God that's in them. First that which is natural. Then that is spiritual. Come here and worship. And you haven't submitted to the house. And you haven't submitted to the vision. And when you leave here after clapping your hands. And forgetting to give your tithes and offering. And you walk out of this building. And come against the vision of the living God. Who are you? That was God. That wasn't Stephanie, okay? <laughs> Who am I to judge a vessel that God himself has called? You will never gain access to what you don't submit to. You want power? Submit to power. You want authority? Submit to authority. You want wealth? Submit to a vision. You will never gain access to what you don't submit to. You know what makes me powerful? And it's God. I'm submitted to a vision. Even David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? This person that's not connected to a vision. I don't care how big you are, Goliath. I don't care. You're un uncircumcised. You're not in covenant. You're not submitted to leadership. I'm with the very living God. I'm submitted to authority. And I command you, giant, to come down. Your authority lies in your ability to be in covenant relationship with the authority that God has placed in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Do you know when you come against your vision, you're coming against God's heart? Do you know when you speak against leadership, you're speaking against God? And then you're going to go try and intercede and wonder why God is not moving when you're speaking against the very thing that's supposed to be working for you? Jesus, help me. Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is trying to, to, trying to break some traditional religious strongholds up in here. You see something wrong, submit to it and fix it and stay quiet. <laughs> and I, I promise you, power will begin to arise. Doors start opening. People start asking you to do things and you're just like, I'm just a servant. I don't, what do you mean you want me to do this? I'm just submitted to authority. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to help the vision of the house. I'm not nobody. This is God's work. <laughs> Thus save the Lord. Somebody give him a praise right there. I'm almost done. Verse 4. <laughs> I'm almost finished. <laughs> Tell me key number one, please. Who got the keys wrong? <laughs> key number two. Excuse me, I have lip gloss. My sister says, do not put lip gloss on while you're teaching. Sorry, guys. Key number three. <laughs> it's powerful. I only have access to what I'm obedient to. My power and my wealth lies in my obedience. I'm obedient. 
I don't like the things that I'm told <laughs> all the time. I don't agree with everything. But I'm not here to serve a man. I'm here to serve a vision. And if God has placed the leadership in his life, that my life that he's placed, that must mean that he's seen something inside of me. That must mean that something is inside of me that God will place a true leader in my life. They're there for a reason. You speak against them, you speak against God, and you stay in the place that you're in. But this is for those who are anointed and want to take their anointing to another level. It's powerful. Amen. Key number four. Can you read verse four for me? Just two more verses and I'm finished, I promise you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Key number four. I got a little twisted here. I recognize that I'm valuable. I have identified the things that I'm hiding behind. I'm submitted to authority and I'm going to submit to the leaders that God has placed in my life. The fourth thing I need to do is I need to step out of familiarity. My fourth key is I need to step out of things that I'm familiar with because the anointing that is inside of you will never, you'll really never see the true power in it <laughs> if you stay in the same arenas and stay connected to the same people who ain't got nothing going on. They might be the people you're hiding behind. Those people. <laughs> I need to step out of familiarity. I need to step out of tradition and religion. I need to step out of the same relationships that are not taking me anywhere. I have to submit to authority and place myself in situations that cause me to get to know myself. You will never know what is really inside of you around the same thing and the same people all the time. For the anointing and you really get to see what is on the inside of you, you're going to have to step out into new arenas. That job, you might not want to switch it, but it might cause you to contact something that is on the inside of you. That relationship, you might not want to leave it, but it might cause you to recognize the authority that is inside of you. That financial dependent thing that you're on or person, you might not want to detach yourself to it, but it might cause you to realize how wealthy you really are. I need to step out of familiarity. He says to go borrow, I'm going to be obedient now. Go borrow empty vessels. Go connect to people. Go knock on some doors and connect to people who don't look like me or talk like me or act like me. Let's not talk about people who don't look like us. And let's get ourselves in arenas that we're unfamiliar with so we can really see what is on the inside of us. I'm never going to see the anointing in me doing the same things and around the same people who say the same things all the time. If you can't get around new arenas, create one. Start a new something in the church. Pastor, you know, I was wondering if it is okay with you that I might start this youth group or this here, but only if you tell me it's okay. Create an arena. Connect to new people. Create new relationships. Do things that you've never done. Try things all in order and in balance and in submission and in alignment with all the other keys first. It's in a systematic order here. And actually, this key will bring me into my next key because when I get into new arenas, key number five... He says to her, go borrow empty vessels, go knock on doors, go connect to, to new people, create new relationships, establish some boundaries and get to meet new people, do new things. I'm stepping out of familiarity. Key number five, then he says to her, when you do that, I want you to come in now and I want you to shut the door. And he says, I want you to pour out here. So my fifth key is... I need to shut the door to destructive thinking. This goes back to what Pastor Gwendolyn was sharing yesterday on the mindset and the resting the thought. 
process. I need to shut the door to some things because what's going to happen is when I go into these new arenas, right, I recognize that I'm valuable, so I'm going to submit to leadership. And after I submit to leadership, then I'm going to go into new arenas because now I'm under authority. So, you know, I'm only doing the things that my leader feel is prudent for the anointing that's inside of me before the foundations of the earth. And so now I'm going to step into new arenas. And what's going to happen is you're going to start recognizing things about yourself, what makes you feel uncomfortable. You might be like, wow, I didn't know that I could speak that way. Or, wow, I need to work on this. Or those new arenas are going to cause you to recognize some things that actually have been hindering you. And so what you're going to do is now these new situations and connecting to these new arenas and these new people, you're going to go back in your secret place and you're going to shut the door and you're going to deal with yourself. This is the place where I confront me. Because this thing is hindering me from connecting in these new arenas. It's hindering me from submitting to leadership. It's hindering me from recognizing my value. It's hindering me from walking in my anointing. So after I do all these things, it's going to start staring up. You're going to start combating the things that are trying to keep you down. Those things are going to start surfacing. So now you got to get along with yourself. <laughs> and you got to fight you. <laughs> says Jacob wrestled with a man but it starts out with him saying he was alone <laughs> I'm wrestling with myself who is going to do this thing am I going to let this false me this old me or am I going to allow who I truly am Israel to walk in my anointing this is the place where you wrestle with you shut the door to destructive thinking and because it's that probably that thinking that's keeping you from walking in your anointing so you're going to have to fight that thought process and wrestle until the anointing takes over this place people don't like because nobody likes to be alone with themselves because that's why we're dependent on all those relational things. That's why we're hiding behind. Because we don't want to deal with us. That's why he asked her, I got all of that, but what's in you? I can't see that because. So I have to shut the door to destructive thinking. Shut the door to old mindsets. Shut the door to bitterness. Shut the door to unforgiveness. Shut the door to jealousy. Shut the door to envy. Shut the door to hate. Shut the door to these thoughts and these things that actually are just things that you're hiding behind that's hindering you from walking and your anointing. Shut the door to these thoughts and deal with the reason why you're thinking them. Shut the door to the thoughts and wrestle with the reason why you're thinking them. Key number six. Just two more. I'm finished here. Shut the door. Shut the door and confront myself. That's the one thing we don't want. We don't want to be alone with ourselves. <laughs> you act, actually, sometimes it really is the fear that you actually are great, and you are. But our nature tells us otherwise. But truth tells us the truth, amen? Key number six, he said to shut the door. Now I've shut the door. I'm confronting these thought processes, processes that are hindering me. I'm submitted to leadership. I'm challenging myself and stepping in new arenas. I'm recognizing that I'm valuable. I'm not trying to hide behind all the things that have been keeping me suppressed. And now that I've closed the door to everything and I'm alone with myself, now it's time to pour out my pain. Now I am where I'm really supposed to be, broken, alone with God. Father, I'm not hiding behind unforgiveness anymore. I'm not hiding behind jealousy. I'm not hiding behind that person or this person. I don't want to wrestle with myself anymore. I want you to take over, and I want to be alone with myself so that you can deal with me.
deal with me, Father. This is the place where I let him father me. We worship him, but you know, God says, let me father you. I know that you haven't had your father in your life. And the key, a major key of healing that God wants to do is for you to submit to authority. It's also a level of healing that comes with that. That is what the purpose is for it, not to suppress you or to keep you locked. So I've shut the door, and now I'm where I'm truly supposed to be. I'm broken. I'm not hiding anymore. I'm not gossiping. I'm alone with myself, and there I'm letting God, I'm allowing his grace to heal me. Here I want you to see something, and I'm going to go to my last key, and I'm done here. This is a three-dimensional pour out because he says, borrow empty vessels and then pour into them and move aside that which is full. This is a three-dimensional pour out here. There's first a pouring out. I'm pouring out my pain. I'm pouring out the things that I'm really feeling. I'm pouring out that rejection. Ah, shit, Oh, they left my life, Father. Oh, my, I gotta let it go. They're not here anymore, God, but I gotta release it. I'm pouring out that hurt. Oh, Jesus, that, that was really, I know I was bitter, but the truth of the matter is I'm just hurt. <laughs> oh, God, I know I, I was acting jealous, but the truth of the matter is I'm grieving. I know that I was gossiping, but the truth of the matter is, I'm afraid. I'm pouring out this rejection, and I'm pouring out this hurt. I'm pouring all of this out, and then I'm going to allow him to pour the second dimension of his grace in those areas that have been hindering me. A three-dimensional pour out here. I can't, I can't just pour. He, he's not telling me to just pour into vessels, go minister to people, go knock on the... No, no, no. I have to pour out my pain so he can pour it in his grace, and then I can pour that back out and let it overflow into the lives of the people around me. I have to let God deal with me before I can stand here and say something to you because that's the only way the anointing can really do something. I'm not saying these things to you because they sound good. I'm telling you because this is what I'm doing every day of my life. And it's working. And I got to tell the world because it's really great. <laughs> it's a three-dimensional pour. I can't pour. I can't pour new wine into old thoughts. I can't pour fresh anointing into old mindsets. So I pour out my pain, and he pours in his grace. I pour out my hurt, and he pours in his power. I pour out that neglect, and he pours in his love. And only then can I pour into someone else. Last key, final key, last key. May I have, where's that wonderful musician? Can you play something just right here? I'm going to close out here. My last key, number seven. The last thing I need to do in these seven keys on unlocking my anointing is I need to, we spoke about this yesterday as well, I need to train my internal dialogue. I have to train my inner speech. I have to train my voice. (laughs) I am, what we say yesterday, a speaking spirit. This part God doesn't do for us. I have to literally train my thoughts to think the way I want it to think. (laughs) You have been given the power to do that. God says, you're made in my image. Your true identity is my spirit. You are the image and reflection of the very living God. But he gave me dominion over the fish of the sea, my soul, the fowl of the air, my mind, and the earth and all that creep up upon it, my flesh. He gave me authority over my body, my soul, and my spirit, my body, soul, and my mind. My spirit is already in him. That is already my true identity. But the soul, the emotions, the will, the consciousness, that's all on you. And so sometimes we expect God to move in an area that you have the actual authority to move in. You have the authority over your mind. My father says, Bishop says, the reason why it's so hard to change your mind is because you have to use your mind to change it. (laughs) 
but you don't confront the thing at its level. You go into the spirit and you tell your mind what to think. <laughs> Can I give another revelation to you? When you were created, God spoke out to everything. This is on the, the, CV, the CD, um, the five elements of existence, talking about your true identity. When he spoke, he divided, he, he called the flowers and all that is in the earth. But for man, for man, God spoke to himself. And he came within him and he spoke to every dimension of his being and he said let us every part of me every dimension of my existence let us make man and let me tell you that because that is the way you were made is the way you function you function based upon how you were made when you were made God spoke to himself which means everything that you create is conducive to what you are saying to yourself your reality is conducive. Reality is conducive to what you're saying to you. So you want to change your reality, change what you're saying to yourself, and your reality changes automatically. You function the way you were made. When you were made, God said, and he spoke within himself, and you became, <laughs> which means that you have to speak to yourself to create your reality. I'm telling you, if you grab that revelation, your entire life will change. Stand with me and let us worship the King of Kings. God bless you. I don't know how long I was going. <laughs> and if God has done something on the inside of you tonight, I want you to just lift up your hands. And let the Holy Spirit do something new on the inside of you. If your faith is where I know it is, and you're tired, <laughs> and you've been asking God, what do I need to do? And in his love and in his grace, we have come together for such a time as this, that you may be able to walk into your anointing. Now I'm going to ask you, and if we're just going to come into agreement. Can you move this for me, please? Those of you who are ready to drop off those old thoughts, you're really ready to walk into who you truly are. I want you to come up and worship the Lord with me. And just stand up here and just lift your hands. I'm going to come into agreement with you. I need, some, I need someone to sing something. Where you, where you at, Stephanie? Where's the worship team? Let's sing, sing something for me. Sing Harabo Shende. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do we know that song, I Give Myself Away? Can we sing that? Hallelujah. And I, I, I only want you up here if you're really, really, really serious. Where the uh, ladies, pray, pray with me. Let's, let's come in together. Let's, let's do this together. Pastor Gwendolyn Bishop, let's, let's pray with these women together and come into agreement. Can you stand with me? But we're not doing it for you. We're only coming into agreement. See, we're only here to come into agreement with you. We're not going to do it. We're only here to lead you to the water. But only you can drink of it. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is ready to move in you. Oh, he wants to heal you. The Father... He says, I, I, I understand. I, I, I've never left you. Some of you have been wondering, Father, where are you? Father, I, 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 I can't take this pain anymore. And he says, I've come tonight, daughter. I've come to transform you. I only want you up here if you're serious. I don't have anything 
extraordinary about me. I'm only submitted to the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and you worship him the way you know how. Holy Spirit, pour out te kata mama. Ladies, can you pray with these women? Can you pray? Holy Spirit, release your power. Oh, you're going to have to cry out. We're going to come against the spirit of religion. We're going to come against the spirit of oppression. We're coming against the spirit of rejection. We're coming the spirit of sabotage. We're cursing that spirit that has tried to hinder the plan and the will of God in your life. We're coming against every hindering spirit, every, every stronghold, every enemy, every generational curse, all the spirit of incest, all rabo shakaraba, every whoremonging spirit, every spirit of hate, every spirit of anger, every spirit of jealousy. We're coming against you in the name of Jesus, and we declare the living God and the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings over this house and over these people. Lift up your hands and worship the King of Kings. I can't do this for you. The power is already on the inside of you. The power is already on the inside of you the anointing is already is inside of you 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 can access it oh my my life your my life is in your hands Lord, I long to see your desire revealed. I give myself in me. Sing it out to him. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. with the anointing I give myself away so
hold on one second. Bishop, Bishop McGuire, if I may be released to share with you what is on my spirit from the Lord. I have not forgotten the plans that I have shared with you. I have not forgotten what I said to you, says the Lord. I have called you to be the magnet that you know that you are. For I am bringing a new wave of laborers to this house. For your submission to my vision, for your consistency and your worship and your obedience to me, the Lord says, I'm enlarging you even in this moment, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to bring in monies like you have never seen before. I am going to enlarge you. There are going to be coins. There are going to be people walking in here with a gold coin in this mouth. And because of the excellence that you've maintained in this house and you've given me the glory through your praise through your obedience to my will I say the Lord I am enlarging you even in this moment even this Sunday there will be people who will be the proof of my word says the spirit of the Lord like never before you have an evangelistic evangelical anointing I've caused you to be on television you know that I've said this to you before says the Lord the world will hear your voice this ministry is a mega ministry and Satan has tried to come in here and create strongholds and block the mind of the people from giving and trading but don't depend on the people says the Lord I'm doing it says the name of God in the name of Jesus I'm doing it my son I'm gonna restore you oh I'm gonna heal you I'm gonna restore you and everything that was taken from you I'm going to give you a double portion of it says the spirit of the living God give God a praise if you're a part of this ministry I would praise God right there he loves you so much that he would show up in this place give God a praise if you haven't submitted to this ministry you are going to be missing out if you've been speaking against this ministry you are going to be missing out you're gonna have to expand this place because the people are gonna be coming through the doors wondering how can I get a seat in this place and the people who already are members here don't even get in in time but he says I'm bringing in the laborers and the ambassadors and the intercessors and the apostles and people to work by your side says the Lord you've honored me and now I will honor you and this is not something don't expect this to take father says in 90 days i'm gonna turn it around in 90 days you mark my word says the spirit of god you remember this day you remember this hour i'm telling you bear witness to the holy spirit in 90 days this place is gonna be turned upside down cameras are gonna wonder how can i get a seat in this place worship him right there dang it I twisted up my foot I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, Don't look at me, just worship. Life is not my own. To you, Hallelujah, Jesus. Just give him the praise. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I give I'm myself. Oh, shut up, just the spirit. They're just mad because God is here. Oh, oh there it goes. I'm good. My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you
Daughter, <laughs> tell me your name. <laughs> Pam. 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 <laughs> Pam. The Lord actually was speaking to me last night concerning you. You have such a prophetic anointing. <laughs> and this is not something you don't know already. <laughs> you have a dimensional worship on the inside of you. You have a sound in you. You know that worship that you have in your secret place. God says, I'm bringing that out. I'm exposing it now. And you need not be afraid of what people are going to think because I put it in you because, I, because it's going to break this atmosphere. So I'm delivering my word, but it is your worship <laughs> that is going to bring out and set the atmosphere that is conducive to the signs, miracles, and wonders that is going to begin to take place in this house. You have a prophetic mantle, not just a prophetic gift. You carry the mantle of the prophetic. And there is a sound in you, not just for this region, but for nations. I have called you to travel. I have called you to train and worship. <laughs> And I'm taking you to another dimension. I know you've been operating in me, says the Lord. And you've been wondering, you've been tired. You said, God, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. But you've been faithful to my praise. And because of your faithfulness, God says, mark my words. Mark my words. This woman that you see here right now is not going to be the same woman, not even 30 days from now. I'm going to visit you like I've never... I'm taking you into the secret place. I'm taking you in a dimension that I've only designed for you. And people have spoke against you. People have lied on you. People have betrayed you. People have walked away from you. But you have made yourself consistent. And you said it doesn't matter. I know the God I serve. You have been faithful to me. And I am enlarging your territory. People you've been waiting to come to me your family relationships that have been broken people who've walked away from you and lied on you and have broken your heart I'm mending those pieces right now says the Lord pray with stretch your hand towards this woman of God and bless this woman of God bless her and she's about to go in another dimension of worship don't be a little confused when the sound shifts a little bit don't speak against the sound of this house because it's going to shift all right and know that that is me says the lord and if you speak against it you're only stagnating your own blessing and i'm telling you from today says the lord stretch your hands towards this woman of god and bless the anointing on her life I speak healing into your spirit even now. Help me pray with I speak healing. I speak restoration. Or oh, every generational spirit, every family member that has talked about you, every friendship that's walked away from you, every level of abuse that you've experienced that has told you that you can't do it, that you won't do it, that you're not good enough. That is a lie of the enemy. And I am the I am. And I am with you my daughter I am with you my daughter I am with you and I have anointed you for such a time as this bless the name of the Lord right pastor, pastor you pastor you pastor church he's doing a clean sweep <laughs> I'm, I'm cleaning out, I'm cleaning it out. I'm cleaning it out and I'm bringing in a new wave, a fresh anointing, a newness into your spirit. I've heard you intercessor. I've heard every, I've, I've caught every tear. Hey, Kosha, things that you haven't even told anybody that you know only you and I know. Things you've experienced even in your childhood. I'm bringing healing and restoration to that relationship. Are oh, there some relationships with some men from the past that have been pulling you down and keep telling you in your mind that you're still that person, that you're not going to move. Oh, I'm coming against that mindset. I'm cursing the plan of the enemy. The spirit says I'm moving 
with a new wave into your house, into the inside of you, into your congregation. I'm doing a clean sweep. So if the numbers get less, don't worry, because it's actually meaning increase, says the Spirit of the Lord. You have such a prophetic mantle, and you know, but everybody's about to know it. Everybody's about to know what you've gone through. Every he said, don't be afraid of your testimony. Don't be afraid of sharing that piece right there. Don't worry about what they're going to say and what they're going to do because I'm bringing in a whole new wave of people, new armor bearers, new worship, new monies. I am the God of God. I am the Lord of Lords. I am the I am. And I am going to do it for you, says the Lord. Ekosha, ekosha, eko healing in your body. Everything coming back into a alignment everything that everything in your body every organ come back into alignment Ekosha, in the mighty name of Jesus 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 it's time to give birth to an anointing Ekosha, worship God and shut up if you look at me, you're going to miss what God is doing. If you think I'm the one doing this, you're going to miss God. Hey, Kosha, stretch your hands towards this woman. Hey, ho, ho. trust me, your obedience in this is only a blessing for you. Stretch your hands toward this woman of God right here. Play the blessing of increase upon our life. Hey, Kosha, and the Nasa Karabasa, we bless you in this hour. Hello, boy. Remember this moment. Hey, I'm doing it. I'm the living God. I'm the one. It is I. It is I. There's nobody else. You need not to be dependent on anyone else. You have an anointing inside of you. I blessed you for such a time as this. I blessed you for this generation. I'm bringing in a new wave of women to hold you up and lift you up and pray for you and intercede for you and carry you and do all the things that you have been giving to others. Hey, Kosha. There is no one else. He kobasha, he karase, orasha kata. There is no one else. Lift your hands towards the King of Kings. Where are the members of this house? Where are the members of this house? I need the members to step right up here for me. He kasha ka, right here, right here on this. He korabasha kata ba, Bishop. Oh, she's praying for Pastor Gwen. Pastor Gwen. Where's Pastor Gwendolyn? I need your help. You do miracles. We're gonna anoint you. I want I want you to bless them. That the anointing that God has placed on you for this house will come into alignment with what God is doing. And come against the spirit of confusion, the spirit of division, gossiping, religion, tradition, every spirit in this region that has tried to hinder this body, this kingdom house. I said this kingdom house. Bishop, can you come up front, please? Hey, Kasha, please. Because after that, you're going to pray for your bishop. She's going to anoint you, and then we're going to pray for you. There is no one else. The Father says it's not meant for you to understand everything that I'm doing in here. I know that things are not clear sometimes to you, says the Lord. But this is my doing. And this is my house. And I have placed this man of God before you for my purpose and your level of submission and obedience and lifting up this man of God and the leaders of this house 
will transfer into your personal house. Your submission, your obedience for you to stay in your lane and stay in your place and work together for the vision of the kingdom, your ability to do that, I will enlarge you and bless your house. Not just you, but your whole household. I will bless your name. He says to check yourself, check your heart. Because everything you need is conducive to your submission to this vision that I have ordained, says the Spirit of the Lord. And if you're not in place, it's going to completely sweep you off and out the way. So you either have to get in place or get out the way. Because another level of anointing and a new dimension of my glory is residing here. Heko shababashata. And if you're wondering why I haven't done it for you and you see it happening in the house, it means that you have to check your heart. Lift up your hands to the king of Eda Shata. I speak increase in this house. Hekata. I curse every plan of the enemy. <laughs> I declare and I decree the headship of Jesus Christ <laughs> that every individual assigned to this household will come forth from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. I call forth the ambassadors that belong in this house and the ambassadors that are in this house, I command you to position yourselves and the mighty name of Jesus to submit to the vision of this house that you and your house will be blessed oh I bless you right now in the name of Jesus I enlarge this place by the blood and the spirit of the living God this is the kingdom of God the kingdom of heaven abides in this place and you will treat this house as it is so in the mighty name of Jesus stretch your hands towards this leader and pray the spirit and pray blessings over his life and Enlargement over his life, increase over his life, restoration into your life. I'm bringing forth all the pieces of the puzzle back together. Hekata. Don't worry, I'm bringing all the pieces of the puzzle back together. I'm restoring, I'm enlarging, I'm increasing. Nobody else can do it. I want you to know that I am God and I have you right in the palm of my hands. <laughs> Oh, you don't even know the anointing that I have placed on you. I'm taking you and to a new dimension. And you need to release this man of God. You need to release him and stop pulling him down to our level. I have called you to a new dimension of my secret place. And these people, we, we sometimes realize we pull our leaders down when they need to go to that place so that I might be blessed. So we pray for everyone to be positioned around you. Everybody to stay in their place, stay in their anointing, stay in their alignment, order and formation in this house so that my glory can be revealed and my true excellence, as you've already demonstrated, will be taken to higher heights. In the name of Jesus, bless this man of God and pray restoration. Everything I'm telling you is coming back together in the name of Jesus. There's no more religion and tradition up in here. Now there's only kingdom in this house. Don't try to go back to what you're used to because it's not gonna work. We got new worship, we got new leadership, we got everybody in order and in place. And if you do not stay in your place, you are going to miss out on what I'm doing in this house, says the Lord. Stretch your hands toward the praise team. Hey, Kosha. I come against every spirit that has tried to hinder the worship from going to the next level. Stretch your hands, every spirit that tried. 
everything that's tried to come against you. The enemy knows that once your sound changes, it's over up in here, up in here. And I pray for your vocal cords even to go to a new dimension. I pray the sound of heaven over your vocal cords that you may call forth. Angels will abide here, says the spirit of the Lord. I come against every spirit of perversion, every spirit in this house that has tried to hinder this, every spirit that has tried to come against your minds. Worship leader, I'm bringing you high ahead of Osha. There's a new place I'm taking you in the spirit realm. Angels will abide here because of your worship. There's no more religion and tradition up in here, but kingdom. Hey, Sha. Satan, your time is up. <laughs> Let me hear you say that. Satan, your time is up. <laughs> Let me hear you say that. Say, Satan, your time is up. One more time. Satan, your time is up. Satan, your time is up. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. My God, we have been blessed tonight. We have been blessed tonight. Get your offering in your hand right now, wherever you are. You have an offering. You have an offering. We're not going to hide. We're going to recognize that we're valuable. Come on. Somebody say, I am anointed. No, come on, please. I am anointed. I am anointed. All right, we're going to release you to bring your offering as soon as we uh, make one more announcement tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a session with you if you would dare to come tomorrow. In the middle of the day, from 11 to 1, you will be blessed. And then tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Hallelujah. We're going to be in this house. Yes. Hearing from God through his vessel, Bishop Dr. Mark C. McGuire Jr. Amen. Anybody excited about that? Amen. Hallelujah. Your assignment tonight, bring somebody tomorrow. Those people who brought somebody tonight, you get an A. You bring somebody tomorrow, you get another A. You bring somebody out on sun Saturday, you get auto insurance. Triple A. Amen. Praise the Lord. One, two, three. Amen. All right. Who's going to bring somebody tomorrow? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Amen. 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 All right. May the Lord bless you. Come and bring your offering, and we will see you tomorrow at 11. And if we don't see you then, we're going to see you tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Amen. Stephanie's minister, Stephanie Roberts products are going to be in the back. Put your hands together for this woman of God. Woo! Inspiration station. Amen. Inspiration station. Praise the Lord.
gonna work in your favor Late in the midnight hour God's gonna turn it around It's gonna work in your favor Oh, late in the midnight hour God's gonna turn it around It's gonna work in your favor the midnight hour God's gonna turn it around and 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 around late in the midnight hour God's gonna turn it around It's gonna work in your favor Oh, late in the midnight hour God's gonna turn it around It's gonna work in your favor Yeah, cause we're blessed in the city We're blessed in the field We're blessed when we come and when we go Oh, we can't down every stronghold, sickness and pride.